<laughs> this is a journey into sound. A journey which along the way will bring to you new color, new dimension, new value, and a new experience. Welcome to the Geese Spot Podcast. I'm your guide, Katie Silcox, bringing you your weekly self-love sound bites. Join us for conversations around sex, spirit, and all things self-care. All things self-care. All things self-care. This is a journey into sound. 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 We had the most incredible class last night uh, with my dear friend and sex educator, Chris Muse, and we learned all about our erotic anatomy. And, you know, I, I like kind of think of myself as somebody that's pretty well educated in these things. I mean, I'm a tantric priestess for the love of God, but um, I, the whole time I was just like learning so much with Chris. And so in our level two, I, I am just learning from every single one of these teachers. And in our level one, we have 20 of the most incredible, wise, Ayurveda-inspired women on the planet. And I'm just so excited about next year. I really hope you'll join us. I'm just letting you know it's signing up quick, okay? Filling fast. Get your booty in there. Join the 100-plus women from all over the globe. We are an incredible tag of ladies already. So um, get your booty in there. Also, are you looking for some yummy stuff to make for your beloveds over this holiday season? Or maybe you just want to make it for yourself. I'm over here on our sponsors website. You guys know we love a Haragi. Our official sponsor of the Gee Spot this month of December and their website is ilovegee.com. Check out the show notes for some incredible uh, discounts that they give our Gee Spot listeners. And I'm just like perusing their, I haven't made any of them yet, but I'm going to. Um, how about some chai coffee cake? How about a cashew chai latte? Or, oh my goodness, some turmeric and black pepper popcorn. Vanilla ghee chocolate chip cookies with pistachios. <laughs> I feel that my my pizza vata is gonna get out of hand over here. Check them out, and as always, use our link so they know we sent you. So on to the show. Um, today's topic, as promised, is all about how to talk to your family uh, about your new Ayurveda lifestyle or about your old Ayurveda lifestyle. Um, so many of us are going to be with our families over the holidays and many of us just came from being with them over the Thanksgiving break. And, um, you know, I, I mean, this is, this is my story. So I wrote a book called healthy, happy, sexy. It, it was a New York times bestselling book. And I'm only bragging about that because it makes the story a lot funnier. <laughs> and that is I've written a New York times bestseller on Ayurveda and I go to my house and I don't know, I think my m- My mom may have read the book. My sister may have. But most of the people there in my family have not read my book. And it's become kind of a family joke. Like, I'll be like, well, you know, I talk about that in my book. And my brother will just be like, yeah, I don't read. Um, so So all this to say, I know the way it can feel to really love something and be slightly obsessed with it and really stoked about it and it's changed your life and you know you want to tell everybody about it I mean it breaks my heart to think that my family members are not doing neti pot and abhyanga and tongue scraping and nausea oil and you know eating warm and wet in the winter like I can't stand that thought but honestly I don't really think about it much anymore and there's there's some progression uh, with that. And so I'll, I'll give you all my secrets about how to, how to subconsciously infiltrate your family with Ayurveda rather than what I used to do, which was march in on my little Ayurveda soapbox and, you know, tell everybody what to do. Um, even though I'm a little bit bossy still, of course, um, that doesn't work. And because I'm a tantric, I want 
to always do what works. Otherwise, it's the definition of insanity. So how can I talk to my family about my Ayurveda lifestyle without being annoying? And, you know, this goes for those of you that are listening that that have husbands and maybe partners that you want to share Ayurveda with or kids that you want to share Ayurveda with. By the way, in our level two program, we have a whole two modules coming up on Ayurveda for children. And so that's really cool. But um, so first of all, Ayurveda for most people, neophytes to Ayurveda, Ayurveda can seem really overwhelming, especially when you don't know how to teach them about it very adeptly, which was definitely used to be me. And it's not not anymore in the sense that if you just roll in and you know say oh, everybody has a different body type and and you know the foods have all these different qualities and here's a food list and you know oh your one son is a vata and your other son is a pitta and your other daughter is a kapha i mean people are going to slam the door in your face because they get what i call ayurveda overwhelmed and we don't want to do that because that's actually not ayurveda Think back. I mean, do you do you really think that the ancient Indians and the ancient Chinese and the ancient Greeks and ancient traditions through which Ayurveda was formed, do you really think that the these beautiful ancient mamas were in their kitchen cooking a different meal for each of their different doshic children? <laughs> No way, right? That did not happen. But what they may have had insight into was the grandmother wisdom that understood like, okay, if you have this specific condition, then you may want to avoid certain foods or, oh, if if one of your children are more coffic, maybe you add a little more ginger or spice to their food. And they're, they're tweaks, they're seamless tweaks. And the super savvy Ayurveda mama is going to slip it in without them noticing. Yes. You know, I think about one of my my sister's Ayurveda doctors in India told her, you know, if he won't eat meat, you just sneak it into the the food (laughs) you know like I'm not I'm not saying that you sneak meat into your vegetarian family's food but the point is how we can begin to talk to our families and bring our families into the Ayurveda lifestyle is slow and steadily Um, we don't want to throw a bunch of rules at anybody we don't want to throw a huge daily routine that has 50 items on it at people and this is what I teach everybody in my level one course in Ayurveda school like guys learn from me don't hand somebody the full Katie Slilcox healthy happy sexy daily Ayurveda routine you know pdf don't don't hand them that unless they're just like really ready for it what what you we can do with our clients and with our families is give them one thing and if it's a client they're obviously coming there and asking you but with a family don't give them anything because there's nothing more unsavory than unsolicited advice unsolicited advice doesn't go down well at the dinner table especially unsolicited advice on food at the dinner table it just doesn't go down well and so what can we do well what i have found like i just came back from thanksgiving with my family and i and i and several of my family members were like oh my gosh you look so young and i was like thanks you know what are you doing and and i and i know why And it's because of the herbs that I take every single day of my life. Herbs take a while to build up in the body. And I know it's the um, ghee that I put in my body every day. And I know it's that every morning I do my little 15-minute Ayurveda morning routine of tongue scraping, body oiling, um, nose and ears oiling, neti pot, you know, but guess what, you guys, I did not start off doing that. I started off doing one thing until it became a habit. And now I can't imagine not doing those things, like, especially the tongue scraping and the neti pot, right? And I knew that it was the oils that I've been putting on my skin. And they said, Oh, your skin is so beautiful. Thanks. 
And then they want to know what you're doing. So lead by example, not your ideological tyranny. Um, another great example of, you know, and, and especially at our school, Shakti school, we really, I mean, I would say about half of what we do in level one Ayurveda school is spirituality. It's prayers, it's mantra, it's meditating on the bones, it's um, going back and rescuing our inner children. It's <laughs> bhavana and sankalpa and, you know, creating the life that we want and communing with the divine, bhakti. It's, 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 it's spiritual. And Ayurveda divorced from spirituality is lame. It's just lame. Meaning it doesn't walk as well as it could. So, the spirituality of it is another thing you ca- you can't force. But what I did do this, and, and so many of our families have lost their traditions and traditional spirituality. And um, one of the things that I asked at the dinner table, I just, I just, bef- you know, before we sat down, I just said, Hey, would you guys mind if I did the prayer? And they were like, no. And I said, could we do it in the form of a song? And I, And they were like, yeah, yeah, sure. Do whatever you want. And I've never done that before. And, you know, you can imagine it's kind of weird. Like all of a sudden somebody's going to sing the blessing and I did it. And everybody was so sweet. They were just like, whoa, where did you learn that? And I want to sing it for you guys because I want you to have this blessing just in case you want to use it. I sing it. I try to remember to sing it before every meal and you can learn it very easily and maybe just maybe you can ask your family this Christmas or Hanukkah or whatever family holiday spiritual tradition you celebrate. You can ask if you could sing it. And this might be the most important Ayurveda practice of all around mealtime. And so it goes, Bless this food and the earth that grew it. Thank you, Mother, for blessing me. May we walk the rainbow together. May we live in harmony. Bless this food and the earth that grew it. Thank you, Father, for blessing me. May we walk the rainbow together. May we live in harmony. And this song I learned from my dear friend, Meredith Hogan, who, of course, is one of our teachers that we love here at Shakti School. And I received it from her, and I know she doesn't mind us sharing it with you. So sing to your family. Don't speak at your family. Sing to them. Sing with them. Another beautiful way is to not talk about Ayurveda, but just to make food. Make food for them, and then they'll go, oh, well, what are you doing? Well, why are you putting that in? And then you can, you have an opening. If someone questions you, you have an opening. Sing to them. Pray at the mealtime in front of them. Think more about how you can give Ayurveda to people than how you can shove it down their throat. And give without words. Give by living. Give by emanating. Give by being the vibration of sattva, right, of harmony, um, and passion. Um, another reason that we don't want to give unsolicited Ayurveda advice to our families. Okay. So two, two more reasons. Number one, you cannot be your mama's guru. Oh yeah. That is guru. (laughs) I mean, there's some Indian stories about how you can, but it's, it's very challenging. And the reason that it's challenging to be your parents' teacher is that or or your family's teacher in general is guys, they've been seeing you since the day you were born. To your mother, you will always be a little baby bouncing on her knee. And I think about to my father, I will always be probably this like um curious, wacky, uncoordinated little twelve year old. <laughs> um 
so they see you that way and your brothers and sisters see you that way and you can do the most i remember rod one of my first tantra teachers saying he he you know he'd written this amazing book he's like flying all over the world teaching and he comes back to his family and they're just like whatever you know and he's saying i i was i was waxing philosophically about the difference between buddhi and sattvic buddhi and you know these these sort of like more advanced tantric philosophical notions of reality and he would come home and the kids are just like whatever you know and that really speaks to this and you can be the most brilliant interesting ayurveda educator on the planet but they are going to always see you as this bumbling awkward teenager or a little baby so that's great because we need to have our family and they keep us humble And they keep us, (laughs) to say it nicely, they keep us humble. Um, So, number one, you can't be your mama's guru. Number two, it's codependent. to When we give unsolicited advice what that is what that is actually what happens in the nervous system when we do that even if the person isn't consciously aware what the nervous system will do is a number of things but that are too complex to go into on the podcast but that's why you have to join ayurveda school because we go into this and we go into the what happens in personality traits and what happens in emotional bodies when people give unsolicited advice when it's it's almost like a boundary violation uh, at the at the furthest end of the spectrum, but what it does is it says un- unconsciously, right? We're not necessarily aware of it. It says to that other person, "I don't think that you know how to take care of you, so I'm going to tell you how to do it." And e- either the person says, "Great, I don't want to take care of me. You do it," which that's not good, or the other person says, "F you, I do." Right? And so either one of those things, we don't want to give prana to um but hey how about i make this food and share this with you and um you know and if again if someone asks you're happy to share um you know another reason is that food especially being such a big part of ayurvedic medicine food is a really sensitive topic for people especially women and we want to tread on that lightly um i have a funny story about food and and how why your mama can't be your guru and how sensitive we all are around my food, especially in my house amongst the ladies. And um, I haven't gotten permission to tell the story. <laughs> so Mary and mom, sorry. Um, I can get in trouble with them later, but I don't think they'll mind or I, I wouldn't tell it. So my sister used to, she doesn't anymore. She used to drink whole fat cream in her coffee and she came home to my mom's house and came down the stairs all groggy and open the refrigerator and she was like mom you don't have whole milk cream for my coffee and my mom was like oh you know here's the almond milk or the regular cow's milk and she was like no it has to be whole milk don't you know food is my love language and we all kind of laughed and it's become a joke in our family that food is our food is my love language like you need to have exactly what i want or you don't love me but the the beautiful part of the end of the story is that my mom was so great and my sister as well and that they were able to laugh about it and my mom really um took that to heart and so when i come home she'll say I got you the whatever, you know, and my sister, I got you the cream because food is your love language, you know, and it became this really sweet thing. And I think that that is such a beautiful lesson. Like, wow, okay, what, how can we use this holiday season to not, you know, share our obsessions in a way that's, uh, and maybe not our obsessions, but just share our passions and share our interests and share our needs in a way that is comical and easy and is all about giving rather than telling anyone how it should be. And I think that this is a really good lesson in terms of all of us who are those those of us who are walking the spiritual path, those of us who are yogis, those of us who are interested in health and wholeness, those of us that want to advance and and evolve and and maybe attain some state of higher if we could use that word consciousness i think it's super important that we just remember that 
none of it matters if we aren't coming from a place of love and and giving and and receiving and so that's my little love message for you guys i just can see you all in your cars and um planes traveling to your families with so many blessings and so much ease of of travel sending you guys so much love and happy holidays Put the pull.